confused about the housing market, we still have to pay attention to inflation and income at the same time. And as long as the demand for homes continues to dominate the available homes for sale, prices will continue to hold up in our local housing market. High prices are a result of low supply. If you're buying a house these days or selling your house, there's no doubt you are feeling confused about the housing market. Now, who wouldn't, right? With so much information being put out on the media channels, it's really tough to get through it all and make some sense out of it all as well. So I am so happy you're joining me for today's discussion. So that's where we can get through all of the clutter together. I'm Sophia Papalevsky, broker with Supreme Home Sales. We'll talk about the major factors behind the housing market and how each one affects the outcome today. We'll look at the latest New York City housing market with a Staten Island housing market update for September. And as a bonus, for my peeps exploring to buy or sell a house in New Jersey, we will also look at the New Jersey housing market. We have a lot to talk about, so let's get started. The most asked question today that my home buyers ask me, and even my home sellers, is the housing market going to crash? The short answer is no, and here's why. First, let's see how we got to this crazy. The US housing market went absolutely nuts during the pandemic. As soon as people realized that they can work from home and don't have to commute to the office, and in addition to that, the fear of being close to another human, the beginning of the increased buying and selling properties to move took off. More and more buyers were eager to buy a home and it didn't even matter if they had to move to another state. Actually, as a matter of fact, many preferred to move as far away as they could for better weather, lower cost of living, and even the mountains. Working remotely created so many options for everyone. And at a very low mortgage rate to this frenzy and borrowing money at such low rate gave home buyers the confidence to pay way more above and beyond the asking price. In some places, as much as 150,000 over the asking price. And listen to this. And if you've been watching my other videos, you heard me say this before, home buyers we're buying homes without a home inspection. This means you didn't even know what you were buying. You didn't even know if anything was wrong with the house. In addition to that, appraisal contingencies were totally eliminated. That meant that you had to bring extra money to the closing table if the lender's appraiser came in short on the appraisal. Home sellers were receiving 20 offers within just a few hours. Some markets were seeing 20% year over year increase in property value. This kind of crazy didn't happen in my 22 years in the real estate business. Luckily, we didn't have all of the crazy here on Staten Island. We had the bidding wars, but not the other stuff. New Jersey had all of it, and so did other states like Florida. And so March came and the Fed has decided it's time to put an end or a slowdown to this crazy and made the announcement that from now on until further notice, they'll be getting a steady increase of the interest rates causing borrowing money more expensive. And today, the mortgage rates are hovering over 6%, which is double the amount they were just early this year. This huge increase is the main driver for a slowdown in the housing market. Let's go back to pre-pandemic times. The housing inventory was low for years before the pandemic. When I started in the real estate many years ago, in 2002, we used to have an average around 4,000 homes available for sale at any given time. 4,000 homes may not sound like much to you, but for us on Staten Island, and being we are a very small island is plenty of homes and just only not too long ago after the recovery of the 2008 real estate crash we saw the housing market inventory as low as like 900 available homes on the market we were under a thousand homes for sale for years inventory of homes are taking a beating nationally 
because home builders are slowing production and plus many homes builders have never got back to the building since the 2008 real estate crash so please listen to the information that the media puts out there but know how to swim through what is related to the national statistics and what is concerning our local market here or better yet subscribe to my channel to be up to date on the local housing market on staten island and new jersey home buyers however did not disappear savvy home buyers understand there's opportunity in this chaos the higher interest rates have omitted some buyers and home buyers these days have negotiation leverage back to some extent no more paying more than the ask price and sometimes even negotiating a lower price negotiating repairs and taking the lenders appraised value seriously this time so if you ask me i think there's a silver lining in all of this and so let's look at the staten island housing market for september and the new jersey housing market update right after that one i put that on chapters for you for easy access let's take a look together at our staten island stats september edition and this is what's happening let's see what the monthly stats are coming from cyborg summer 2022 has been a season of change for the u.s real estate market with housing availability with housing affordability at 33 percent year low existing home sales have continued to soften nationwide falling 5.9 month to month and 20.9 percent year over year as of the last measure according to the national association of realtors pending home sales oh, we don't care about that. all right guys so let's look at what staten island has to say for the September update on data from the last month of August. So new listings in Staten Island decreased by 16.2% to 498. The pending sales were down 21.5% to 365. The inventory levels fell 14.9% to 1,543 units. Prices continued to gain traction. The median sale price increased by 2.7% to 662,500. Days on the market was down 32.3% based on the market always down percent to actually used to be 56 days now it's 32.3 days buyers felt empowered as month supply of inventory was up by one percent to 3.9 months so we're not really seeing any changes uh, on staten island from month to month recently inflation higher interest rates and fears of potential recession have taken a toll on buyers and sellers this summer leading many people to stay on the sidelines to see what will happen with the market but some experts including NAR chief economist lawrence young believes the worst of inflation may be over Although sales prices remain up from this time last year, price growth is expected to moderate in the months ahead as the market continues to shift in more buyer-friendly direction. So my point is, is that, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of this video, uh, savvy buyers are now taking advantage on the less competition, possibility of leverage negotiating some of the price down and doing all the inspection and negotiating repairs. For the people who love to look at graphs, here we are, new listings, comparing data. August of 2021, we had 594 new listings on the market compared to this year, 498. And then the pending sales in 2021 in August, we had 465, this year is 365 and then close sales 537 august of 2021 versus 392 august of this year and uh, days on the market like we said used to be 82 it is now 56 and then the price the median sale price used to be 645 august of last year it is 662 and a half august of this year average sale price was 671 thousand August of last year, and it is close to 700,000 August of this year. So the prices are going up. The days on the market are shortening 
the number of inventory, the number of homes that come on the market are shortening. And of course, less inventory will create less spending sales, but all the data is shrinking. Everything is in the negative. So again, with all the, the talk about what's happening overall in the national level in real estate, in our market here on Staten Island, we are not seeing those same things. Moving on to market data in New Jersey. Okay, let's check out what's happening in New Jersey, the entire state. So the U.S. housing market has continued to cool. Yeah, we hear that all the time as rising mortgage rates and record high sales. Prices have stifled affordability, weakening demand and pricing out of a multitude of buyers. Nationally, the median household income has failed to keep pace with increasing mortgage payments with the cost of buying a home about 80% more expensive now than they were just three summers ago, according to the National Association of Realtors. As more and more prospective buyers find their home purchase plans delayed, many are turning to the rental market where competition has intensified due to the increase in demand. So now here's the interesting part. They're leaving the buying market, right? And now they're going to the rental market and now there's chaos that's being created over there let's continue so we have stats for the single family close sales they were down for, down by 19.2 percent to 7115 the townhouses condo the close sales were down by 22.2 percent to 2129 the adult communities close sales were down by 11.9 percent to 645 so the single family median sale price increased by 10.9% to a median sale price of 510,000. The townhouse condo median sale price increased by 12.1% to 350,000 and the adult community's median sale price increased by 12.5% to 315,000. Keep in mind this is for the entire state of New Jersey. At a time of year when home buying activity is typically very strong, soaring home ownership costs have caused home sales to decline nationwide for the fifth consecutive month. Again, this is nationwide. So let's take a look at the graphs for the people who love graphs, right? So let's compare July of 2021 to July of 2022. New listings decreased by 19% from 11,231 to 9,096. Now this is for single family and the pending sales decreased by 17.4% from 8,171 to 6,750. The closed sales were down by 19.2%. The median sale price went up to 510%. We just mentioned this before. And but the average sale price went up by 10.3%. So in July of last year, 567,000 was the average sale price. It went up to 625 July of this year. And year over year, new listings have been going down. That's 2021 to 2022. So is the pending sales, so is the closed sales, but the median sale price has been going up. And so is the average sale price been going up the townhouses and condos different numbers but same thing year over year a new listing decline pending sales decline year over year close sales decline but the average sale price went up by 11.4 percent from almost 398,000 to 442 and a half and of course days on the market keep shrinking okay so adult communities same problem new listings are Year over year, they are up by like 0.6%, but July of last year to July of this year went down by 3.9%. Pending sales are decreasing, and as well as year over year, the closed sales are decreasing. The average sale price has increased from July of last year to July of this year by 9.9%. So, Keep in mind that it's okay to listen to the national news and it's okay to think about that, but things are not the same everywhere. Uh, what you find 
in your backyard or in your neighborhood is could be completely different than from all the news that you are listening to. Keep in mind, this is a very hyper local type of situation. Every market, every neighborhood, specifically in New Jersey, we just did the stats for the entire New Jersey. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start giving you statistics on the housing market for each county. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell to make sure that you do get notified when I put the data and the information out there for you. But if you really want to know what is going on specifically in your neighborhood, reach out to me. I can give you a customized home evaluation or just subscribe to my channel. And just keep in mind that it's not the same everywhere. We're still experiencing a completely different type of story. The opposite, it's a pivot from what you hear in the general national news versus to what you hear and what's really happening in your neighborhood. Hope this was helpful. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next video. We still have to pay attention to the inflation and the income at the same time. But as long as the demand for homes continues to dominate the available homes for sale, prices are going to continue to hold up or be level in our local housing market. High prices are the result of the low supply still. If this video was helpful to you, like it, subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell, please. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear them and try to answer them as best as I can. Always feel free to reach out. And if you'd like to learn more about the real estate market, I have a whole playlist for you to binge watch.